I take you blame for inflation? No. Why not? Because it was already there when I got here, man. Remember what the economy was like when I got here? Jobs were hemorrhaging. Inflation was rising. We weren't manufacturing a damn thing here. We were in real economic difficulty. That's why I don't. There's a few factual problems with that, but we'll leave it aside. President Biden at a hastily arranged event earlier today to celebrate a strong jobs report. Unemployment numbers, to his credit, are at a 50-year low. And Mr. Biden, as you can kind of tell in that soundbite, it's a little annoyed he isn't getting more credit for what he describes as a great economy. The Democratic National Committee's winter meeting in Philadelphia just wrapped up. In fact, you can see a picture there of Mr. Biden speaking to the crowd. And though he recalled wanting to run for president to restore civility, he didn't miss his chance to throw Republicans uh, pretty well under the bus. Take a listen. Soundbite coming uh, later in the segment. With that, we bring in Niall Standage, White House columnist for our partners at The Hill, Kevin Walling, campaign surrogate for President Biden in 2020. Uh, Niall, I just think about going into this week uh, and the way the White House wanted to roll things out ahead of State of the Union and then into it. How big of a wrench has the spy balloon thrown into things? It has thrown a big wrench because, of course, it commands the headlines. A lot of the whole purpose that you're talking about for the White House is in controlling the agenda, building up to the State of the Union, going to these events, be it in New York or in Baltimore and Philadelphia, that show the either the infrastructure bill or other concrete improvements that the Biden White House argues it has made to people's lives. That is, of course, all disrupted, particularly by a story that is just uh, not only ominous, but bizarre in the way that the Chinese balloon story is. Hey, Kevin, look, this was the president who was going to restore America, bring America back. He was going to stand up to dictators around the world. And we have heard nothing from the president of the United States, the commander in chief, for more than 24 hours, uh, except to just ignore questions. How, how is that leadership? And he can give political speeches over and over and over again. Well, Leland, it's a good question. I think, you know, he has been deferring in the, in the White House through uh, KJP and others have been deferring to military experts on this. This is something oh, that was oh, totally... Ke oh, Kevin, come on, come on. You're the commander in chief. You can't defer. Did George Washington defer? Did Roosevelt defer? Did Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis, oh. crisis defer? No. Well, Leland, I, Leland, I think you, you set this up perfectly at the outset of the show. There are interesting dynamics at play with China. And I think what you're seeing is now calculations going on at the White House as to just how to respond. The first was Tony Blinken saying that he will not proceed to Beijing. There will be military, uh, I'm sure, military maneuvers as part of this. There's been uh, investigations in the air contradicting this uh, aircraft, this balloon that's up there, uh, you know, up uh, over the atmosphere. Uh, and I think you're seeing a White House that will uh, begin to formulate a response. This has only been up there uh, that we've known about in the last 24 hours. But this is, to Niall's point, certainly a distraction from what the president wanted to talk about tonight in Pennsylvania and what he's going to talk about certainly on Tuesday at the State of the Union. Yeah, he's, he's going forth with it. Um, Niall, to you, half of Americans say they're very uncomfortable with Biden in 2024, 19%, some reservations. Um, only 23 percent or so uh, say that they feel good about the direction uh, of the country, the state of the union, if you will. Uh, is the White House is planning for Tuesday and sort of how the president wants to frame things. How much of a nod are they planning to give to Americans who who feel uncomfortable? Well, I think one of the advantages of any State of the Union address is still that it gives a president the capacity to talk in an unmediated way to the American people and gives a rationale for attention to be focused for that one hour, 90 minutes, or however long it is. To your point about dissatisfaction, I think the White House's argument is look at these tangible improvements we are bringing. Yes, there may be debates about various so-called hot-button cultural issues, but look at the fact that we've secured money to uh, improve, make the water healthier, or to limit the cost of insulin for a month. Things like that are not necessarily directly uh, aimed or explicitly aimed at pushing back on that dissatisfaction, but it is, I think, aimed at making the broader argument that government and the Democratic White House can still act to make people's lives better, and then you bring that dissatisfaction down a notch or two.
Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.